Artery health and kidney disease are closely intertwined. For people with heart disease, the risk of kidney damage significantly increases. However, it often comes without obvious signs. In fact, some people who require dialysis may appear to be completely healthy. So today, we're going to explore 7 foods that can destroy the kidneys and arteries. If you're a coffee drinker, pay attention to the section on how this may be good or bad, depending on a few factors. We'll also discuss hidden danger foods, the slightly complex facts about salt and your kidneys, plus which foods to eat more of. Stick around until the end because we've got two free gifts that will help you fight heart disease naturally. And remember to click the thumbs up and subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. Before we jump into the most problematic foods, we should discuss oxalates. Oxalates are natural compounds that bind with calcium, forming crystals which can develop into kidney stones. When kidney stones pass through the urinary tract, they cause severe pain, infections and blockages, potentially leading to kidney damage. Foods that are high in oxalates include spinach, beets, rhubarb, nuts, chocolate, tea and certain grains and legumes. Now you may be saying, hang on a minute, I thought those were healthy. While these foods are rich in nutrients, they can pose a risk for people susceptible to kidney stones. So this category is more for people with a history of kidney stones, and it's more about approaching high oxalate foods with caution, limiting your intake and balancing your diet with lower oxalate foods. To protect yourself, drink plenty of water, as it helps to flush out oxalates and reduce the risk of kidney stones. And you might like to add a squeeze of lemon in there too. The citric acid in lemons binds to calcium and may prevent stones from forming in the first place. Plus, the vitamin C in lemon will help to keep your arteries flexible and strong. Next, we have caffeine. Another one where a little is fine for most people, but you definitely don't want to overdo it. A 2023 study found a J-shaped association where moderate consumption is associated with a reduced risk of heart disease, but heavy consumption increases risk. Excess caffeine can raise blood pressure, and over time, this can make arteries stiff and brittle. As for your kidneys, a number of studies have found that excess caffeine may be associated with impaired kidney function, or even kidney failure. Now, you may have noticed that some people react strongly to caffeine, whereas other people don't. Recent research from the University of Toronto may have discovered why. Scientists found that a specific gene called CYP1A2 influences how quickly our bodies process caffeine. They found a variant of this gene, which leads to slower caffeine metabolism, is associated with kidney issues and high blood pressure. Most guidelines recommend a maximum of 400 mg of caffeine per day, up to 4 or 5 cups. However, some kidney researchers suggest that 300 mg, around 3 cups, is a safer limit. Tea has less caffeine than coffee, averaging about half the amount per cup. And of course, sodas and energy drinks are a no-go if you want to take care of your kidneys and heart, due to high caffeine and other problems which we'll get to shortly. Next, too much protein can have negative consequences over time. Yet, research shows that the average American consumes about twice the recommended daily intake. Protein is essential for our bodies. It helps build and repair tissues, make enzymes and more. However, too much protein can put pressure on the kidneys, straining and potentially damaging them. One study, published in the Journal of the American Society of Nephrology, found that excess protein can lead to intraglomerular hypertension, which may result in kidney hyperfiltration and glomerular injury, meaning that the tiny filtering units in the kidneys become damaged and unable to properly clean your blood. Other studies found that people eating extremely low-carbohydrate, high-protein diets had significantly higher risk of developing chronic kidney disease. 
These high protein diets are often promoted for weight loss and building muscle. But extreme versions like the carnivore diet, where you only eat animal protein while excluding all fruits and vegetables, can lead to a situation where your kidneys can't keep up. Meat, particularly red and organ meats, contain higher levels of purines. While these aren't necessarily a problem in moderate quantities, when these purines are metabolized, they produce uric acid. Too much uric acid in the blood can lead to urate crystals, which accumulate in your joints, potentially triggering gout, arthritis, and kidney stones. While some high-quality meat can be healthy, if your diet is dominated by acid-producing foods, it's been shown to overwhelm the kidneys. Some research also suggests that too much protein may also weaken bones due to excess calcium loss, although this is a point of scientific contention. Plant-based proteins like mushrooms, asparagus, beans, and tofu have a lower purine content than animal-based proteins, and salmon is lower in purines than other fish, making them good choices to include in your meal plans. People on a renal diet should talk to their healthcare provider, as protein can get complicated if you already have kidney dysfunction. Otherwise, just remember that you need protein, but don't overdo it. Most experts recommend an upper limit of around 2 grams per kilogram for the average person. So, for a 70 kg person, that would be 140 grams of protein per day which would vary for athletes or people with existing kidney dysfunction. Likewise, too much salt can be a big problem. Salt is critical for nerve and muscle function. However, too much salt can significantly raise blood pressure, putting undue stress on both the kidneys and arteries. From there, your kidneys, which filter excess fluids from the blood, can become damaged leading to fluid buildup around the heart and lungs. The recommended daily allowance for salt is 2,300 mg for adults, generally reducing to 1,500 mg for those with hypertension. Unfortunately, people consuming the standard American diet often get double or even triple this amount. Major culprits include frozen dinners, industrial goods like supermarket pizzas and cookies, and, of course, fast food. Aside from high salt content, these foods often contain preservatives, chemical flavoring agents, and trans fats, all posing additional threats. To protect your kidneys, moderating salt is important. Use herbs and spices for flavor instead of relying only on salt. Most herbs and spices offer extra benefits for blood and cardiovascular health, thanks to their rich array of antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties. And of course, prioritize fresh, whole foods over fast food and mass-produced industrial foods. Before we get to the three worst, Heart Disease Code would love to give you a free book, The Surprising Truth About Fat and Cholesterol, plus the first episode of the untold story of heart disease, something that everyone concerned about heart health should watch. Click the link in the description below to claim these free gifts. And could you do us a favor and click the subscribe button below? Okay, let's get back to the video. Something that doesn't get much attention is pain medications. While they can be effective in providing relief, Excessive or prolonged use can have unintended consequences. Certain painkillers, especially non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen, can reduce blood flow to the kidneys. Over time, this diminished blood flow can lead to kidney disease or exacerbated existing kidney problems. Likewise, some antibiotics, diuretics, and anti-inflammatory drugs can trigger interstitial nephritis, where the spaces between the kidney tubules become inflamed, compromising kidney function. This normally happens due to long-term use, which is why the National Kidney Foundation recommends that people don't use over-the-counter pain relievers for any longer than 10 days. Extra caution is advised for people already at risk for kidney disease, such as those with diabetes, hypertension, or autoimmune diseases. 
it's essential to be aware of the potential risks and always use medications as directed. If you do regularly use pain relief, talk to your doctor or nutritionist about how to reduce the risks. Read the pamphlet and make sure to mention any over-the-counter medication you may use. Many people think things like ibuprofen aren't important to mention, but they are. Alcohol is another major problem that's often underestimated. Regular heavy drinking can double the risk of chronic kidney disease. When combined with smoking, the risk becomes five times higher. Moreover, alcohol can elevate blood pressure, which, as we discussed, is another contributor to kidney issues. Studies show that regularly consuming more than two drinks daily significantly increases the risk for high blood pressure and kidney disease. Furthermore, alcohol-related liver disease can trigger a host of other problems. So if you choose to drink alcohol, do so in moderation. And at number one, we have sugar in all its forms. While the occasional treat might not spell doom, habitual overindulgence can. For starters, excess sugar causes insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, a leading risk factor for kidney disease. When your body is bombarded with sugar, uric acid accumulates, further damaging the kidneys. In your arteries, sugar is linked to atherosclerosis damage, inflammation, and cholesterol oxidation damaging the brick and mortar molecule that makes each and every cell in your body. Sugary beverages like sodas, sweet teas, and fruit juices are among the most popular problems. These drinks pack several teaspoons of sugar in a single serving, leading to rapid spikes in blood sugar. Be aware of hidden sources of sugar too, as these can make a big difference. You might think that drizzle of ketchup or a dollop of mayo is harmless, but many condiments are teeming with added sugars, as well as salt and other chemical nasties, like preservatives and artificial flavors. Instead, make your own tomato sauce and mayonnaise. Use extra virgin olive oil or try Greek yogurt. Stay away from processed and frozen meals, and beware of words like low-fat or fat-free, as they often compensate with added sugars. Essentially, check the labels for added sugars, sucrose, high fructose corn syrup, and glucose. Or simply stay away from ultra-processed products. And finally, we have refined grains. These don't taste sweet, but they essentially behave like sugar in your body. Refined grains in bread, pasta, and anything that contains flour are quickly converted into glucose leading to a blood glucose spike similar to eating pure sugar, which is going to be bad news for your heart, arteries, and kidneys. So what should you eat to protect yourself? It's not an exciting fad diet, but the fact is that balanced nutrition is key. Eat plenty of leafy greens, including spinach if you don't have a problem with oxalates. Fatty fish is a great source of low acid protein, and omega-3. Cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower have the compound sulforaphane, which has been shown to improve blood flow in the kidneys, amongst other benefits. Garlic contains allicin, the super antioxidant for protecting both the kidneys and cardiovascular system. And nuts are rich in L-arginine, an amino acid that helps to relax arteries. The broader rule is to eat the rainbow, with plenty of antioxidant-rich berries, beans, vegetables, seeds, nuts, spices, herbs, and fruits. Eat quality protein. You might want to watch our video on that. And most importantly, water helps to eliminate kidney stones and keep everything working well. Eight glasses of water is the standard advice, but adjust that depending on your personal circumstances, level of exercise, etc. Your urine can tell you a lot about how much water you need, and for most people, a sandy yellow color urine is a good indicator of whether you're getting the right amount, too much or not enough. Although this can change depending on any medications you may be taking, or other factors. Watch our video on urine color for more info on that.